Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I'm here with Nicole Kratz, who is the chief engineer for the Chevy Silverado EV. We did a full walk around video with Jill. I'll check that up above if you want to see the details. In this video though, in this video, I'm going to beat up Nicole a little bit because guess what? I'm buying this truck behind me. I've been EV curious, as I think most people are, right? Can it fit my lifestyle? 400 miles of range seems like it's pretty feasible in that range um, of fitting my lifestyle, but I'm, I'm just kind of curious, looking at the overall design, especially says Avalanche to me, I'm a little Avalanche kind of guy. My first hard <laughs> question for you, Nicole, you drive GMC AT4, I you do. know the off-road crowd. Where's our tow hooks? Uh, this is an RST. Uh -huh. And the RST is not designed for uh, tow hooks and okay. for that kind of a feel. Uh, Mary in the CES uh, reveal talked about a trail boss. Oh, and you're going to so see there's... your tow hooks in the trail boss because um, we definitely know what full size truck drivers want. Yeah, it seems like there's this attack on tow hooks lately. So, automakers, knock it off. We need them. They're important things. We know you want them, <laughs> but not everybody wants them. So, we're going to offer versatility and we're going to offer models with everyone that wants them or doesn't want them and this is the first model that we're offering in the rst the trail boss is going to have that factory lifted with the um with the tow hooks and the the you know off-road uh, off. looking t wheels and tires and things like that that come with it right because we look at ground clearance here i mean we have this fascia going down we don't have a to me, a ton of ground clearance, but you're going to say that's more the trail boss. You're going to have to buy a different vehicle for that different need. Yeah, and um, remember, though, we do have um, my mode and we have air suspension on the RST. So, so the truck is still capable of lifting through the air suspension up to two inches in either direction. So this is the current height that you're seeing. I'll just say nominal height. It's still capable of going higher. It's still capable of going off road, but it is that more urban feel, urban look to the RST uh, model. Okay. So you went unibody with the construction of of this um, truck, right? And people are doing this conversation between unibody and body on frame. There's some trade-offs there when you go the body, unibody, body on frame. Why did you go unibody with this truck? So um, we're actually not a traditional BFI architecture either, unibody architecture. Um, so this is a different way of building up a body structure. So we're not taking any trade-offs between body on frame and body frame integral, if you will. Um, the Ultium architecture, the battery pack itself, has a lot of the structure of the vehicle, which is different than a traditional um, unibody or body frame integral architecture. So it's basically thinking that the Ultium battery architecture is your frame rails, and then you're putting the body structure and integrating it to it. So it um, provides better center, gra lower center of gravity, way better structural feel integration, and you're not trading off um, payload, durability, cargo carrying capability, all of the things that a full-size pickup truck needs to have. So I don't think we've traded anything off. What we've done with this though is enabled the batteries to become all the way outboard to the structure where needed. So um, those that would choose to put a body on frame truck and put batteries into it are now limited by the amount of batteries they can put in. Sure. So now we're getting more cell capability, more cell capacity inside the truck, which allows us to get that 400 miles. And so, and speaking of like a battery, right? So the ultimate battery, you start like here maybe mm -hmm. and goes back. Yep. So, you know, we're looking at breakover angle and stuff in an off-road situation, your battery's right there. I mean, I'm sure this battery is pretty protected, right? Yeah. Everything is uh, water fording, breakover angles, departs, uh, departure and, and, um, and uh, approach angles. Everything is um, that of a full-size traditional pickup truck. So we're not giving anything up and the, the structure pack itself is, is totally uh, covered. And we also have aero panels that go under the whole truck for the aerodynamics as well. Okay, now I live in Nebraska where it gets freaking cold in the winter time, it does. right? So my concern is- How cold is freaking cold? Uh, with the wind chill, we get negative temperatures. Okay. You know, and right. so my concern is the batteries and that kind of temperature range. Yeah. So what kind of off, like what kind of frozen environment are you testing this truck in? Um, the truck gets tested in all of our facilities. So we have campus casing up in Canada, which is the uh, cold white north. <laughs> yes. Um, I've been there many times where minus 40 is minus 40 and you don't have to say whether it's C or F. <laughs> um, the truck itself has some software and technology built into it in terms of um, preheating the batteries. So we have a lot of um, 
uh, technology built into the vehicle where you're going to say, I want to leave at 7 a.m. in the morning. It'll start a preheat cycle so that the batteries warm up while it's charging in your um, garage. And that uh, allows us to not have as much drop off in range when you're out in the cold weather. You know, batteries don't like cold, but if they're warm when you get out to that ambient temperature, it's not as big of a drop. So okay. you want to keep the batteries warm and then when you're driving outside, as long as those batteries remain warm, it's not the fall off that you would expect. Well, you know what, when I get older, the less I like cold too. So looking yeah, at too. these wheels here, this is an interesting design. Uh, walk me through, is it aerodynamics? Is that the deal? Is it, it's just, it's still striking. The, um, the wheels have been designed by our design team and it's really to um, complement the RST appearance. Okay. So again, it's that 24 inch wheel and tire profile, um, really dramatic styling inside of the wheel. Um, yes, it's designed for aerodynamics as well, but we've really integrated the design that the design team wanted and sort of hidden in all of the aerodynamic ads. So it's not like we set out to say, we want an aerodynamic wheel, design, go design around it. It was really design, what do you want for the wheel? And then we're gonna stick in some little features that allow us to have uh, great aerodynamics. Okay, and I mean, that's a massive tire too. That's, it's just, it, it's interesting. Who would have thought in this day and age going to 24 inch tires? I think that um, people are very excited about it. There is a market for it. The truck's capable of other wheels and tires. Our work truck has an 18 and uh, coil suspension. So there's a broad range of opportunities and you'll be seeing more in terms of um, that range and capability. And the way you did the wheel wells, right? We're not gonna have any rubbing situation because you have more of a square wheel well versus more of a rounded situation. Yeah, um, square and round are um, not an issue for us. The squareness is really the Chevy um, brand styling that okay. the design team wanted. We have plenty of clearance even with the two inches up on a 24 inch wheel and tire. We design all of that really more towards the inside of the, of the wheel well itself. So we can um, provide very different appearances in this architecture from a, a square or a round perspective, no matter what. So we kept, the, we kept the step right going in and we have nice tread on that. So you can still put like your 16 foot inch boot in there, which I don't really have, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> a little short on that end. We have the multi-flex tailgate or multi, whatever you want to say. Yep. What is this material here? Is that a composite material? Um, no, this truck's going to have a, uh, this is a reveal truck has some sort of um, paint on it. It's a spray and bed liner will be okay. standard for the RST. Okay. And yeah. then power outlets here is, is we talked about 10 point two was it but that was the entire truck is it the front plus the rear so um 10.2 is with the accessory power bar connected to the charge port as well as using the onboard outlets okay um so there'll be capability with using the outlets that are in the power bar as well as capability of using the outlets on board okay and so and then is it just all 110s back here or do we have the there's 220 a, there's a 240 yep and then there's uh, four 110s. Okay. And then in the console, there's a uh, 110, and in the front, there's a 110. Okay, so th the last question that we don't have information on, but I'm sure your team's working on, you know, we have we have a heavy battery, so I have concerns about payload, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean, there's a give and take with the battery yep. system situation. I know that's probably not published yet. There's also concerns about towing as well. So I just want to know, in your experience, when you've been testing this truck, because I know you've been on the test ground, something like that, have you had any concerns with towing? to you have um, payload for a base vehicle and then you have payload for a fully loaded vehicle and every time you add an option yep. you know your payload goes away you're gonna see from us very competitive payload numbers that are extremely good from a base vehicle perspective as well as up through the RST so the trucks very capable of higher payloads as you option out um, so that's the first thing the second thing is from a trailering perspective I actually think the trailering experience is better than in my full-size um, pickup truck today. We have 10,000 pounds. That, that, that was fighting the words okay. there. That was fighting the words. Um, it's okay, I can, I can back up my fighting words. So <laughs> we have a 10,000 pound capable um, trailering capability. We have rear steer, so the trailering dynamics in terms of sway control and input into the rear is very much under control because of rear steer. And then when you talk about shift busyness and driving up and down grades and going you know, um, through mountains and through um, you know, just even up north in Michigan, sorry, but um, you know, you don't have any busyness. It's torque wherever you need it, when you need it, 
and it's always monitoring the level of torque that you need without overly giving it to you and under delivering it to you. So from an optimization efficiency perspective, I think it's a better experience. From a shift busyness and drive experience, it's better. And um, I think that the trailer dynamics people are gonna find to be as amazing as the fact that the overall vehicle handling with that lower center of gravity is gonna be um, so much more refined than a traditional pickup truck. Do you think we'll ever get to the point, like an EV truck world, where we're gonna talk about towing range? Because that's, yeah. that's such a, a, a huge item for everybody, including myself, right? So I go camping twice a year, and I need to drive 100 miles. And I'm, I, that's why I'm more, the range got me on this one because I could actually make that work. That's right. I want to go to the campground and relax, have a beer. I don't want to go to the campground and go plug in right away and have this right. thing going on. So do you think that metric will eventually come out? We're going to talk about some more payload or more towing range numbers? We've already, so we don't have the exact range numbers yet. We just need to test through that. And a lot of things have to be equal because people get um, confused about, you know, it all depends on yeah, what your trailer, trailer is, what's the aerodynamics of your sure. trailer. Are you pulling a big, you know, camper versus are you pulling a car hauler? What I will say is that um, we, we do know initially that the fall off of range is equivalent to that of an ice vehicle. Okay. So it's not, if you have a 400 mile range um, gasoline Silverado light duty and you put a 10,000 pound trailer on the back and you then see 200 miles of range, and I'm making this up because I don't actually know the numbers. If you see that it goes to 200 miles of range because you're driving on I-75 at you know 70 miles an hour, you will see that similar drop off in this pickup truck. Okay. So for us, it's really about getting the most EV range possible so that the um, opportunity to go further is there. You know, if you have a 300 mile range truck and you're gonna tow that trailer, you're gonna be at 150 miles. If you have a 400 range truck, you might be at 200 miles. Whatever that math is, of course, the more mileage you can get out of the nominal condition is gonna give you more mileage out of your trailer um, condition. But you shouldn't feel like going to an EV means that you're going to give up more range from a percentage basis than you would with a traditional ice cream. That's really interesting stuff. So, all right, there you go. There's the answer to your million dollar question about towing. Um, Jill, like I said, did a full walk around. Check her video over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.